Anyone else feel like they're not in the Core Kids Club because they're not in Dublin at the moment? Me. Good. Glad it's not just me. Hello, everyone. No Dublin shock? No. Nope. Um, couple of reasons, but broadly, they all came down to I've traveled a lot and I've got more travel to go this year. <laughs> yeah, I hear you. I'm also not in Dublin, so. No, you're not, David. But it's a beautiful day in uh, Northern Virginia. So uh, please uh, vicariously enjoy the day, I guess. <laughs> Sounds like nice. Are the leaves falling? Uh, not so much here yet. Uh, that comes later. It's probably already starting in New England, but uh, it's, uh, it, it's still, uh, uh, what I call thermostat weather. If you're familiar with Fahrenheit, it's around 68 degrees Fahrenheit. <laughs> Basically, where where it's where you set your your te your uh, room temperature at if you want to be comfy. <laughs> Very cool. Um, alrighty, so we've got just the one item on the agenda today. Um, just before we get started, anyone, anyone new want to say hello, introduce yourself? I guess I will. Sure. Hey everybody, I'm, I'm Lee Primusberger from Hewlett Packard and I'm excited to see the presentation today. Um, my name is Deanna Medina. I'm from Honeywell. I'm kind of new to the S-bomb conversation, so I'm just going to sit back and listen. <laughs> cool. Uh, hi, I'm Alex from Active State. <clears throat> I've been to a few of the other OpenSSF groups. Um, but yeah, excited to see the demo today. And, and I brought my very own copy. My name is Philip Svela. I'm from Safe Software from Canada. I'm excited to see the, the presentation. Found out about this through the Open Source Summit, this working group. And so oh, I'm nice. really excited about the work that you're all doing here. Is that it? I can't remember if I've been to this meeting or not, so I'll introduce myself anyway. <laughs> I'm yeah, Catherine Jackman. Uh, I'm from Intel. I'm new to Intel. I've sat in a lot of these meetings. I'm very interested in a lot of the different working groups, so I'm anxious to hear what's going on today. Awesome. Yeah, welcome, everyone. Uh, yeah, just historically, this, this working group has been full of really good presentations and fostering a lot of good discussions around uh, software supply chain integrity. So if you do have a presentation or a topic you want to discuss, yeah, please feel free to add it to future agenda. Um, and then we will definitely let you take the stage and present and talk and teach us all things. <laughs> And uh, yeah, just a reminder for new folks too, this is part of, this working group is part of the OpenSSF and these meetings are recorded and um, uploaded to YouTube at some point in the future um, when we remember. <laughs> I think I think it happens automatically now, we got someone helping us out. So um, yeah, so with that, um, Jay, do you, Jay and Adrian, do you wanna take the stage? Jay, are you here? <laughs> I, hope. I am here. I am. <laughs> I am here. I was just on. Uh, just, just on mute. And and thank, thank you very much, Kim. Um, okay. Yes. So, so, so here we are. And I, and I didn't announce myself earlier. This is not the first time I've attended this, uh, this working group meeting. And sometimes I have to sit back and, and listen. And other times I might, I might chime in. Um, so I'm not necessarily new. And as a matter of fact, that wave, uh, in and out of all the um, working group. Uh, meetings across the open SSF um, up to and, and including the TAC meeting. I'm trying to get as involved as possible. Um, all that being said, I do uh, work for Microsoft and I do evangelize bringing a lot of the good work that's happening um, in Microsoft into the open um, where I think a lot of this work uh, belongs uh, up to and including what uh, Adrian and I are, are uh, here to present uh, today. And I'm waiting on Adrian to go ahead and uh, I think he's here, I'm not sure. Um, anyway, 
what we're presenting today is uh, is uh, what's been developed uh, by Adrian and his team um, in uh, one uh, in, in uh, one engineering services here in Microsoft, uh, and it's the open source software supply chain security uh, framework. And this framework um, is uh, consumer focused uh, and really does drill down in a lot of the issues around um, supply chain, focusing on ingestion, which, 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 and, and that's really a huge item that's not really focused in a lot of the other uh, frameworks that, that you see today. And what we do plan on discussing along with the framework itself is how, um, how it balances and bridges over to the other frameworks we're discussing here in the openness itself, such as Salsa um, and, and, and other frameworks like that. So look, so as we're talking, please look at this as not as competition, but as a bridge and as something that if, if we do this correctly, we can have both of these documents built and, 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 and improved such that they can both be hand in hand to help both the producer, the, the producers of, of, of bills, and then of course the consumers of those uh, bills and organizations. So I'll pause there. David has a question. Um, what, what you got, David? Yeah, so I, I, I'm, I'm looking forward to the presentation. Of course, I've, I've heard your previous one. So I guess um, it is my thinking, but maybe I'm misunderstanding things. Um, is Microsoft considering contributing this to be part of the Open SSF? And if so, you know, then the Open SSF have to, has to decide whether or not they want to take that on, and if so, which working group. Um, so if that's part of the discussion, then it's probably helpful to know that in advance before the presentation goes. Uh, Jay, you're probably the best person to answer that question. Absolutely, that is the desired approach. So, so I'll I'll start I'll start with what the what the aspirational end is, and then we'll and then we'll do what I like to refer to as Tarantinoing it, right? With well, Tarantino, <laughs> right? Um, the aspirational end uh, is to have maybe some type of ISO, some type of NIST, and then maybe some type of ISO standard uh, when you consider ISO a dash one and a dash two. Let's think about it, right? Dash one being a producer focused framework or a consumer focused, yeah, you could, you could do one or the other, you could swing it as which way you want, but dash one being producer focused, dash two being consumer focused, but ultimately being something that's uh, industry recognized as secure supply chain frameworks um, that's complete in, in its construction, completeness build, and complete in the way that it's continuously improved through organizations such as the one we're in right now, OpenSSF, right? Because this is a place where there's a place to do with that. Um, now, Tarantinoing it, how do we get there? First, by having this brought into the open into the open SSF, being worked inside of the open SSF. And we're proposing to not only here in, in, in secure supply chain working group, but we're proposing to the end users working group tomorrow. And we proposed already to the best practices working group. The idea is for all three of these working groups together. And if this is this is me talking now, I, I you know, far be it for me, it could be home to one but I think this should be worked across the board because I think it has merit in each one of these working groups. And there's enough meat on this bone to chew on, just like just like we're doing with, with Salsa today. Um, Salsa's been split off into, into, into SIGs and, there, and there's, a, there's a, pro, a, a positioning SIG, a specification SIG, a tooling SIG, and that's no difference than what can happen with this with the exception that we're bringing it in and we're saying, hey, Work one of these working groups take it. A couple of other working groups get on in and dig in. Let's build SIGs and then and then let's let's build both of these out together side by side because you can't talk about one successfully if you're not talking about the other. And if and in my honest opinion, this is me talking, a lot of the 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 conversations that we're having both on the you know within the salsa, because I'm in all those meetings too, but and then a lot of the stuff that we're talking about when it comes to this consumer focused frameworks the secure supply chain framework a lot of the difficulty that we're having is because we know the missing pieces 
and we're talking about them actively, but we're not bringing together the information that we already have in place to fill those gaps. We can fill those gaps uh, with this because now we can talk about these together in parallel, bridging the two together, one another. Go ahead, Dave. And a quick response. Jay, I'm pretty sure you already know this, but for those of you who don't, uh, the Linux Foundation is actually an ISO pass. So if there's a specification and there's a desire to submit it to ISO and make it an ISO uh, standard, uh, there's actually, uh, you know, there, there are mechanisms in place to do that. We can talk about that. But, but step one is to have the conversation here. You know, is this something they want to contribute to OpenS? Is, that, is this something OpenSSF wants to pick up? Um, I would not be surprised if the answer is yes, both sides, that'd be awesome. And if that happens, then there's some uh, next steps that we can do to make that. To, to, uh, Jay, I, mean, I can't guarantee all your dreams come true, but at least there's a path for this one. <laughs> yeah, well, we got Disney World for that. And uh, of course, if it ends up happening, David, Disney World's on me. All right, um, we got uh, Adrian just, uh, just, just, uh, just popped in and that's excellent and perfect timing. Um, Adrian, I warmed them up for us. Please go ahead and uh, and and, uh, and take it away. Yeah, I I also just wanted to to double down on that comment about um, about uh, making it an ISO standard. Uh, my understanding is that the license that we chose that's in the GitHub repo, the community specification license, was actually designed with that in mind, so that these can be more easily. Uh, contributed it up to to ISO to be making a standard. So just wanted to point that out. Um, but yes, I'm I'm here with Jay. I can help provide an overview of the OSS Secure sc Supply Chain Framework. Um, it's it, uh, the way the way that we've organized it is uh, we start at a very high level and then we get more and more further down into uh, uh, specifics. So at the high level, we have some solution agnostic set of practices, eight different practices. Um, these are these are things that can be applied to numerous different scenarios um, because different uh, um, you know open source ecosystems have have different uh, uh, consumption um, nuances. From there, we also then describe the set of requirements. And these set of requirements map to those eight high-level practices. Then um, we've we developed this list of requirements based on real-world open source uh, supply chain threats. Um, I think we've all seen the the uh, industry report from Sonatype in 2021, citing that there's been a 650% uh, year over year increase in attacks that are specifically targeting open source. So making sure that we are configuring ourselves to securely consume them um, is paramount because I think there's another report out there that says 90% uh, of all software today consumes open source. And so open source is a, a critical piece of every software development team and organization's supply chain. So we've analyzed these set of real world threats. We have links to them, uh, to the articles that describe these threats. And then we, we map and say, these are the, our requirements that mitigate against these threats. Um, after we've identified this set of requirements, we've then organized them into a maturity model. I think for years now, the, the industry has had some, some basic recommendations on, on how to have a, a OSS governance program. Uh, those, those uh, in simple terms are inventory your OSS, scan it for vulnerabilities, uh, and, and keep it up to date. To, to patch the vulnerabilities. That's basically our maturity level one, right? That's that's kind of like the bare minimum. That's where I would say a large majority of organizations and teams across the world are because they haven't had any guidance to 
uh, improve their um, their governance programs. Um, so level two, the theme for level two is all about um, helping you uh, patch faster, improve your mean time to remediation. Um, so we we've implemented requirements such as you know, uh, um, leverage auto patching tools uh, that, uh, you know, auto submit a pull request and, and suggest a, a new patch update um, and uh, shift further left by raising OSS vulnerabilities as comments and pull requests. Um, by adopting those types of capabilities, you are helping your developers patch faster than the adversary can act. Because we've seen, um, also mentioned in one of the uh, Sonatype state of the supply chain reports that um, the SALT stack uh, had, uh, they, they publicly disclosed a vulnerability same day that they made a patch available. And um, it only took adversaries three days to craft an exploit and start actively exploiting against the vulnerability. And because organizations and teams take a long time to patch their systems, even though a patch was available, they were getting actively exploited. And so we need to start adopting tools and technologies to patch faster than the adversary can operate. Um, level three starts moving us into um, uh, malicious protection. Uh, there have been lots of um, compromised open source. There's been lots of um, new uh, threat vectors such as dependency confusion and, and organizations and teams need to start to develop technologies that can start to evaluate the um, and protect themselves from consuming uh, open source that uh, that may be malicious or compromised. Uh, and level four um, is largely uh, aspirational. Um, this is, uh, I would say, reserved for for open source that it, that you deem like uh, a critical dependency inside um, one of your your critical applications, um, and and it has to deal with. Uh, you know, um, cloning the 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 a, a local copy of the repo so that you could potentially even rebuild it yourself if you needed to. Um, be proactively scanning it for for unknown vulnerabilities that aren't disclosed today, and um, have the capabilities in place to uh, yeah. contribute those fixes back upstream, and and if. You so needed if the if the vulnerability you discovered was so severe, you could um, uh, you know fix yourself to to temporarily to mitigate against the risk um, while you um, confidentially coordinate with the upstream maintainer on implementing a public fix for everybody. So there's um, um, and then the the. The guide also has a questionnaire for organizations to, to interview their developers to understand where they are um, on their journey of the, the maturity models. And uh, we also have mapped our set of requirements to six other secure supply chain specifications just to show the, the traceability there across. I'll throw a, a link into the chat. So if I may ask the obvious question, mm -hmm. you know, you, you are you are open to adjustments. I think several people have complained about your definition of open source software. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I know you've heard it before. I don't actually mean to beat on you with that. It's just the, 
Um, but I mean, I don't think that that uh, subverts the document at all. It's just, hey, there's some things that I know people here would like to comment on, and but you're willing to make some adjustments based on community feedback. Is, is that fair? Very fair. Yes, that okay. is the intent. Yeah, yeah I, I wanted to. I wanted to reiterate. We're bringing this into the open. Um, Adrian posted our the, the GitHub repo here. Uh, submit your submit your your your. No, we we have it both in PDF and both in Markdown. Um, you know, read it. Submit your sum, submit your your improvements to it. Submit your thoughts around it. Get you know we're we're, we're actively. Uh, we actively want to improve this for the better, for the community, for the industry at, at, at large, as I said before. So, so this is something that everyone can get their hands on, sink their teeth into, and uh, and, and really build out. I, I, Isaac, you got a question? Yeah, I, I got a, a couple of questions. Um, I mean, so the first one, I mean, well, actually, my first observation is um, thank you for bringing this. Um, I think it's a, it's a really solid set of, of, of practices. I mean, um, you know, I looked at this and others looked at it internally at Google, and we're kind of nodding along with it as a, as a set of best practices for ingesting open source dependencies. And I think it's articulated very well in those terms. Um, one, one question I have is, um, you know, about the overall intent and, and scope. I mean, um, actually, let me let me start with one simple question at the top of the tree there. And do you imagine this this framework as, as being applicable to organizations as to, or to artifacts? I mean, should I conceptualize this as, hey, my organization is at level three of SSC with respect to how we manage open source? Or should I conceptualize this as this artifact which I produced its dependencies were managed in conformance with OSS SSC. And so uh, should I think of this as organization oriented or, or artifact oriented or, or is it both? Um, if I were to uh, share a little bit of my vision, um, I, I absolutely imagine a future where organizations uh, claim, you know, level three conformance to to the framework um, and I uh, I think there's there's a certain requirements that that, that can't really done be done on a on a per repo level it kind of needs to be done on like a, a larger team or or organization level um, for like proper disaster recovery planning like yeah you know one of yeah. the yeah so, so, uh, so, yeah, there, there are, uh, I would say, a couple, a uh, small handful of requirements that are God. leaning that that direction. Yeah. And so, it it sounds with that that it's I can think of it kind of like a maturity model for, for an organization or a transformation framework for an organization who's getting started on this journey and they're going to progress as an organization up these levels. And it's it's not necessarily the case that. You know, an individual artifact will have an att attestation about OSS SSC conformance. Um, that that makes sense. The the other question I had was was just about the the name. Um, the way I mean, I, I think the, the way the document describes this and the way you've described it, you know, around you know open source uh, dependency ingestion or dependency management. Um, you know, the the specification of the or the you know seems like the name has a much broader implication than the specification today because soft, you know secure supply chain is obviously much broader than dependency management the specification you know talks about dependency management how do you safely ingest open source dependencies what does your organization need to do in terms of best practices and yet the the name of the thing is you know open source software um secure supply chain um I mean, would it make sense to, to think of this under a different name, like open source software, um, you know, secure dependency management or secure ingestion framework or something like that? Or, or are there ambitions here to expand the specification to comport better with the name as it is today? Well, uh, uh, so I, I, I well, Adrian, because I, <laughs> I, I mentioned this earlier, right? So aspirationally, right, mm -hmm. thinking about what we have currently in most secure supply chain frameworks where they're very producer focused. We're taking a consumer focused angle to this. All represent a secure supply chain when brought together. 
there's mm -hmm. you, you have one element that focuses on one end of the spectrum around the supply chain. We're bringing this all the way back to the point of, hey, this is how a company would ingest. So when you combine these together, right, when you when you bridge them together and you march them forward, producer focus and consumer focus, you have a complete secure supply chain framework, both representing secure supply chain from one end or the other. The desired yeah. and aspirational goal would be to have these work in parallel. So, so to change the name, we could, right? By itself, it might represent one thing, but we really do want to reinforce that these should be brought together because you can't effectively yeah. work on and talk about one without effectively working on and talking about the other. Otherwise, you're going to always have gaps. Yeah, no, I, I I agree I agree with that, and I think I mean that's that speaks to where I was going to go next, which is you know overall I I think uh, the open SSF um, you know needs to have you know clarity with the way it it, it, it presents it, you know supply chain security frameworks, and we we can't afford to have two of them, right? We can't afford to for people to go oh open SSF have got two competing supply chain frameworks, one's called Salsa, one's called SSC, and so I, I think that we need to to you know to your point. Um, you know, position these carefully as as two parts of a coherent whole, and and figure out how they best fit together to provide you know an overall supply chain integrity framework. Um, my my question was was really about you know the name of this thing suggests supply chain broadly, the text of the specification suggests dependency management more narrowly, and so I was just trying to to understand how those two fit together. I mean, what what you said makes complete sense in terms of hey, look, we need to think about the supply chain holistically. You can't just address one part of it. Um, I, I definitely agree with that. And so I, I think, you know, if, if the open SSF were to, uh, you know, adopt this or begin to incubate this further, I think figuring out, you know, how do we position Salsa alongside this so it's not confusing, so people don't, don't come away with the impression that, hey, there are two competing or two separate supply chain frameworks within the open SSF. We really want to explain that, you know, no, 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 there's just one, there's different elements of uh, supply chain security and the, the, these sub frameworks speak to those different aspects, if that makes sense. No, that, that makes perfect sense. And, and, the, and the, one, the one caveat to this and bringing it into the open is so that we can further those kind of discussions, right? And, and, and mm -hmm. as we further them along and as it evolves, it could evolve to whatever it's going to be. What I also want to uh, bring in is the difference between uh, in a security framework and a compliance requirement, right? Yeah. Yeah. And, and and understanding that there's some elements of this that could become compliance driven, where you do have attestations, you do have artifacts, you do have third parties that are coming in providing certification, and then you just have something that's that's designed to create a, a secure to, to reinforce a secure architecture. Um, a mm -hmm. secure infrastructure, secure architecture around secure supply chain. And I think we have the, with the work that we could do together, we could really provide that one-two punch. Salsa yeah. itself is being poised and positioned. There's the ongoing conversations. I think right now, one of the, one of the biggest ones, and this is just my opinion and what I hear is the, the ebb and flow between, is this a compliance requirement versus a, a secure framework, right? We're talking about attestations, we're talking about artifacts, but then we're also talking about tools that are being used to, to put controls in place to provide that kind of information. Here, yeah. we're specifically calling this a secure supply chain framework. We're not even saying a compliance, we're not saying compliance requirements. We actually have a set of controls that could be put in place to secure uh, your, your supply chain environment on the ingestion side uh, and, 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 then, and then going into, you know, as you collapse them both into the middle, right? So one could be uh, security and architecture driven. Other one can be a compliance requirement that attests to those controls being in place. Once both of these items, and let's just say Salsa and the SSC together, are, are mm -hmm. further developed openly, like we're like we're like we want to do here. They could be developed and improved such that those gaps can be filled. 
as you continue to bridge on, on into the middle, if, if, that, if that makes sense. Like I said, a lot of this stuff is aspirational. I get excited about it, and so does Adrian, right? And, and, and so the, the, the excitement is there to see if we can't bring this in. But these conversations are, are the ones that need to be had once it's in the, you know, as we're doing now, to reinforce mm -hmm. these ideas and, and, and bring them both up. No, I, I think you're right, and I, I share your excitement. Honestly, I, I do, and I, I think that there's there's a lot that we could do here, work, working together in this space. I, I guess, um, you know, at, at a high level and pot potentially pot precisely in this working group, I think it would be great to form a, a collective, you know, co consensus around the map of the problem domain and how these various things that we have today map into that in a, in a non-overlapping way. Because you know, already we've got salsa, we've got fresco, we've got guac, we've got mm -hmm. you know sig store, and someone showing up at the open SSF today could be forgiven for being very confused on on day one. And I think if we add another, we we risk adding to that. And that's not to say, no, 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 we shouldn't add another. It's more to say, yeah, let, let's bring in this, these new capabilities, but let's also make sure that they're all positioned correctly and we can tell a great story about how they fit together because yes. um, it is, it's a confusing space today already. And at the open SSF, having these various frameworks and various acronyms, there's also the CNCF. There's also a bunch of government bodies coming out with those things. There's NIST coming out with SSDF and it, it's a confusing acronym soup. And so I think it's incumbent upon the open SSF to you know, frame, you know, describe the problem domain and how our solutions map into that problem domain in a natural way. Um, and I would, you know, I, personally, I'd, I'd love to see, you know, joint work on on that. Um, and I, I see SSC and Salsa solving separate problems in this that, that we can work together on. Absolutely. Anyway, with that, I'm going to lower, lower my hand and stop monopolizing the conversation. <laughs> go, go ahead, Jack. Usually monopolizing the conversation is my job. So, um, you know, <laughs> Watch out! I'll be I'll be suing you for anti-competitive practice. Um, yeah, so I would say if I put on my end user hat, um, the thing I really like about Salsa is that the scope is limited. Uh, I really like your framing, uh, Isaac, that it's about artifacts and information that attends and attaches to artifacts. Um, I think there is definitely room for complementary practices, you know, methods, controls, if you like, um, and it would be useful to have something particularly because that will prevent the sprawl of salsa. There is an ongoing tension between what salsa sort of started out as and what, um, what folks are yes. worried about, you know, like, oh, it doesn't cover this and it doesn't cover that. So I, I would be happy with, you know, a, a, an allied um, framework that takes that pressure off and allows salsa to stick to its knitting. Um, yes. So yeah, we've, we've all had a good time discussing alternative names. Um, I think, I think it basically comes down to, do you want your puns to be about Latin dance or do you want them to be about food? Because salsa leads either way. <laughs> yeah, and, yeah, he, he, so he and I are both in those meetings and that's kind of what I was alluding to earlier, that the scope of, of salsa is getting kind of lost around what gaps are not being covered in it per its current scope. And I think the current scope is sound. I, I, I think the, the salsa scope is, is phenomenal. If, to not go beyond that and, and just basically say, hey, that's out of scope for this. Good. We have something that we could provide that's in scope for that. Let's bridge them together and improve them together. That way, both of these documents with their individual scopes can create a 360 degree situation around supply chain security. Or end to end, I, I don't, you can, you can make it into a sphere, you can make it linear into a left and right spectrum. I don't, I don't, I, I'm, I'm just throwing stuff out there now at this point. Um, yes. Hey Jay and Adrian, <laughs> thanks for, uh, yeah, thanks for the presentation. Any, any other questions, comments? I was gonna chime in a little bit. Okay, go ahead, Mark. Yeah, I just have a, a quick question on the um, like the leveling system that's in uh, the proposal right now. Uh, are you anticipating that each level, I knew you just a little bit at the beginning, but that each level provides a particular kind of guarantee of like level one provides this, level two provides that, level three provides that. Or is it more of a guidance of, we think most organizations are gonna to wanna to 
go in this order and level one is like the low hanging fruit and level two is the things that are more costly and 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 so like maybe another part would be like would organizations like kind of mix and match of like they view some threats more important than others and so they would go stronger in some areas that, that wasn't as clear to me reading the doc yeah i i would would not be surprised if if organizations had a sprinkling of compliance across the different levels and they weren't like fully compliant in one but they were more i I could see that and you know uh, we could spend more time thinking about how to how, how to help people claim compliance to just one so that they can um, you know be able to make that claim we want that claim to be uh, you know we you know there's I, I'd love to see this being adopted and find a way to be able to measure that that people are claiming compliance to these things maybe there's some sort of like a like a best practice badge that people can earn once they've proven that they've they've met certain controls or um something to that effect but uh i think i'm slightly getting off the course of your your question which is like does it provide a particular guarantee no i i think maybe well i guess I'm happy to answer it, but actually you got to my kind of the, the root of my question, which is that it sounds like you're intending this as um, not just like a set of best practices that an organization could do, but rather this is something that they would claim externally. Um, okay, thanks. That's my personal vision, yes. So that, that was actually going to be, um, I think, related to my, to my question, which was, um, I don't know if you have this yet, but I, I know one of the things I would love to see is just like maybe some like a demo, even if it's you know a contrived example of like what this sort of those claims could actually look like. So that hey, as an end user, if I want to tell folks, yeah, no, my, like you can trust my org because we're doing the right things. You know, what are the sorts of things folks can can claim, and how can they claim it, and how can folks, you know, do some level of verification against it, and and, and so on. So I know that's one of the things, uh, you know, I, I would love to see. Yeah, the, uh, you bring up a great point. I know that that's like the type of thing that, that Salsa is working on is, is um, you know, using uh, in Toto attestations to claim com conformance to a particular requirement. And we can start to explore that um, uh, going forward, uh, how to how to write up example attestations uh, in that format, I think that would be good. Um, you know, now that we've got uh, these these community meetings, those are things we can add to our backlog to to try to work down and um, and talk about in in upcoming syncs. And to, and to that and to that, and we didn't mention. If you did go to the GitHub page, you'll see them. But we do have community meetings and technical meetings. Um, I want to say, and I, I don't have it in front of me right now either. So please, they're held on a Monday and a Tuesday. One's, I believe, at the third, it's the third Monday of the month and the, or the last Tuesday of the month. It's, it's one, it's, it's that some combination that I don't have it in front of me. Um, but all are welcome. They're on the OpenSSF calendar, right? And, um, and so that they can all be attended then. And of course, if, one of the working groups decides to pick it up and in, in, in incubation and we work on it then a sig then a, a sig for this can get uh, can get can get opened up as well and 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 then you know those meetings will be on the calendar and all can attend those and we can all work on that uh work on it together that way as well so um yeah Very cool. Are, are there other companies contributing right now in the in coming to the, the meetings, or is it mostly Microsoft? Uh, no, no. We have, uh, as a matter of fact, if I pull up the the notes, who did we have the last the last meeting? We had a, 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 a we had a grip of, of people. Yeah, yeah. It was, it was a lot of people in that meeting the last time. Uh, um, nice. Finding it. Are they sending over PRs issues? Uh, 
Um, oh, I believe I haven't Crow. Seen yet. I believe Crobe owes us one. He says he's, <laughs> you know, done the old school, you know, redlining of a printout of our guide, um, and he needs to convert that into a PR. Uh, if I come down to our Sorry, attendance, I don't have to look through it. I was just curious. Yeah, we had um, Wipro, Gen two, Intel. Uh, Linux Foundation, um, Astrotech, uh, uh, and Google attend. Uh, I think we had a total of eight different organizations attend our our uh, inaugural kickoff. Nice. Cool. Um, yeah. Thanks everyone for for the discussion and the and the overview. I think from my side as as one of the working group chairs here, I think um, a couple of next steps uh, that I kind of came up with is maybe present this to the salsa group as well, um, and we can you can sort of talk about what that could look like. I mean, I'm mostly concerned about the comments that. Um, other people brought up about how we position this against salsa and make sure that we're, we're not confusing the world. But I do think, um, to Jacques' point, I think it would be great to have like a complementary framework that fills in the gaps that like salsa, you know, is a bit out of scope for salsa right now. And I think that could be a, a really great story. So um, yeah, I think for next steps, maybe if we can dig a little bit deeper on that and cover sort of how they can complement each other. It might be in the repo. I haven't looked at it. Um, would be good next steps, at least for this working group. I mean, I know the, you know, even the whole process of like the, the foundation and the stuff at the TAC level is still kind of getting shaken out. So <laughs> I think it's probably possible that another group will just say we want it and you don't have to do anything. But I think in terms of this working group and what's in scope for it, like having just having some of that positioning and gap. And so we can talk about these things, you know, as complementary would be a good place to to start. Um, so that's just kind of my two cents quickly based on kind of what I learned today. Uh, does anyone else have any kind of opinions on, on next steps or like that idea, <laughs> including uh, yourself? Kim, would it help? Like, let's just assume for a moment OpenSSF uh, did um, uh, take this on. Um, would it help if we uh, made references to the salsa framework and said like this is where the salsa framework comes in and we could kind of have references from one to the other kind of a thing I don't know yeah just I think just loud. having like, an open conversation with the folks that are more um, active I know mean, we have some of them on the call now active in the salsa thing just to help kind of land this well because um, I like Jock was saying is an active discussion there around scope and um the end of the day for me, like any framework that's improving supply chain security is great with me. I just want to see want to see frameworks that actually can be used. Um, so I think to Mike's point, uh, having like some demos of like how what this could actually look like end to end um, could be super helpful as we're kind of looking at this. Uh, it does, I mean, it doesn't have to be complete or anything, but just so folks can sort of wrap around wrap their heads around how this would work in practice and how people are supposed to use it, I think would be super helpful. Yeah, I, I can actually see, uh, I can actually see a, a great conversation stemming from first hitting a, hitting a presentation in the bi-weekly and, and, uh, and, and Mike, uh, this is something that, um, cause I know you're, you're, you're active in that as well, that the bi-weekly meeting and then maybe uh, hitting off into the positioning meeting after, right after that, to, to kind of position both uh, both frameworks together or, or, or figure out what that looks like. And then um, off to the specification meeting to see where, the, to see where there are uh, parallels that can be bridged from one to the other. I mean, if, 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 that, if that ends up being the, the, the desired state, I can, I can absolutely see um, the, the, fruit, uh, the fruit of that labor, absolutely. Michael has to stand up. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I think uh, I agree with a, a lot of the comments there. I think one of the things um, that's kind of coming to mind, uh, which 
is slightly orthogonal uh, to this. Um, but it, uh, and this is maybe a question for folks like uh, David Wheeler and, and other folks who are kind of like looking at this, a lot of the stuff on the open SSF more broadly is like, do we have um, in any of the stuff from the open SSF that like higher level view on what are all the components of open source security and supply chain security and all that sort of stuff so that when we look at all the different pieces we can better and i know this is this was kind of a question we had early on on salsa last year and i don't know if things have shifted but i know it was like a big open question of like hey you know if if uh we had something like a landscape, right, where, you know, we, we have like this arrow, you know, these sorts of tools feed into these sorts of frameworks, these sorts of frameworks lead into these other sorts of processes, whatever. Um, if we had that sort of thing, I think that would also help us better understand, um, you know, where, for example, you know, Salsa starts and ends, where SSC starts and ends, and, and so on, so that we can kind of go and look and see like, okay, yeah, SSC is the framework and do we have tools that like easily integrate in there? And then it would help us kind of build that story out. Um, and to be clear, I don't think that's necessarily something on, on the SSC folks to figure out. I think it's, it's more for this group to maybe bubble up to, to other people to kind of say, Hey, um, you know, this is a fairly common problem that we're seeing is somebody does show off something really good like this. And we're like, actually, we're not exactly sure how this fits in. And we just need to have a better idea of like that big picture so that we go, we know, oh, it fits in right here. You know what, John Meadows has a fantastic diagram of end-to-end of, uh, of -end supply chain. I'm talking about all the way from, you know, on one end where you're, you know, you're, you're ingestion, you have an other end where you're on the build side. It's fantastic, it's huge. And I think that, that with a little bit of polish, we can kind of take the frameworks and overlay them and go from one end of that spectrum, start on one end of that spectrum with Salsa, start on the other end of that spectrum with the SSC and kind of find our way into the middle. I, I it, it was that it was that fantastic when he showed it to me. So so I I think if we have something like that and we can overlay them and then with a little bit of polish from the people and on, on this team, the best practices team and the end users team, we could sit. We can, we can come together and kind of build that mapping. Oh, you you, you guys you guys see the theme I'm running with here? I mean, I'm not. I I, I there's no <laughs> there's no smoke and mirrors here, people. I'm just. <laughs> yeah, uh, I'll, I'll stay with the theme. Go ahead, David. Yeah, just a uh, quick note. Uh, I actually a while back I did create. I took the uh, salsa diagram and then tried to place where different projects fit in. Some of you may have seen that. I did that with both the OpenSSF mm. projects and the projects not within the OpenSSF. Um, I mean, you know, by no means perfect, but at least it is an early attempt to try to figure out, hey, where do things fit? Uh, Krobe has been doing some of that work. And Jay, I did not catch the name of that person. That John he Meadows, he's, he's, a, he's the, uh, Meadows. Chair okay. of the end, yeah, he's the chair of the end users working group. Okay. And users working group. Okay. Yeah. J so I mean, J O H N. Some... J O H N on that name. Uh, jo uh, no, okay. it's it's Jonathan. It's so it's, it's Jonathan. Oh, yeah, did yeah, I yeah. did I do that wrong? My bad. <laughs> I stand corrected, Jonathan. From from city from city. Yeah. Cool, David. Do you have another question, or you just? I think it's just a leftover hand up. <laughs> Our old hand. Cool. Um, all right. Well, thanks, everyone. Any other last minute questions? That's good. We, we had one agenda topic and we filled up most of the time. It was a good discussion. OK, yeah. so I, I actually, I, I don't want us to go before. OK, so first of all, I, I do want to thank, I'm, I'm sure everybody's going to thank uh, Microsoft for uh, uh, well, for developing this, sharing. Um, I mean, I, I guess I'm going to appeal to um, I don't think we need to take a vote today, but I think we at some point need to figure out, hey, is this something we want to bring into the open SSF? I think there's been a lot of interest in doing that. And then where and I don't I, I think the problem of how do you scope out different things? I don't think we have to resolve it all to get started. 
In fact, I would say that that would be part of the process is working out how it, it's much easier to work out things together when we're all talking to each other. <laughs> and, okay, you take this piece and you take that piece. But I, I would like I would like to not leave Microsoft hanging. That's really what I'm coming to. <laughs> yeah, no, I agree. I want to, yeah. Yeah. Oh. Go ahead. Sorry, I, I was just going to agree as well. I'm inclined to agree with that. I think, you know, bring, bringing it in and then figuring out how, how we do this kind of mapping into the problem domain and, and kind of pos relative position of the OpenSSF framework offerings. And um, that could, you know, that could be work that we do once once we bring this in. Yeah, I mean, I get the question is where, because I think in terms of this working group, I just want a little bit more thought into like how we talk about it in relation to salsa. But like I said, there's other working groups here. And so like, if they are like, no, we don't care, you know, how it relates and this is fine and we'll just figure it out as we go, like that's another option. Um, but I would just like to have like a story um, that I could, that we could be using a, like all in alignment there is in, in terms of salsa and fresca and how these play nicely together. So that's just my, my thoughts on that. Um, and I do want to say we are meeting with the end users, uh, end users working group uh, tomorrow. Um, and I know, and I know John is, he's super, hell, he's super excited about this framework as well. I, I'm, I'm not, I'm not sure if there, if there's like a, some type of a bidding war or something like that. Is there, is there might be. <laughs> I'm just, so, so I'd be remiss if I didn't say he's interested as well. Shrug the shoulders. Like I said, it doesn't matter where it comes in at as long, as long as all uh, the, the three working groups I've mentioned, best practices, this working group, and then the end users working group, I, I do see enough meat on this bone and not just on this framework, on salsa as well. I see enough meat on both of those bones for all three of these uh, working groups to jump in on and have a hand in uh, to help improve it and, and, and bring out to the, to the industry at large. Um, I think uh, Abhishek had a, had a hand up. He's been waiting for a minute. Yeah, I'm strongly in favor of actually keeping it in this working group because that keeps us aligned with Salsa very nicely. Like as Isaac was saying, we want these two parts to work together. And for that kind of alignment, it's very important to be in one working group where there are the members who can discuss that alignment. And there are similar supply chain things like Guac is coming too. So it will be very nice to have these all aligned together and get the story right. So we are very excited about the collaboration. Just it would be nice to have it in the same working group and bring it in here. Yeah, and I'd like to do that out of the gate was my sort of point, because if we get people excited about it out of the gate and not sort of having these back and forth discussions, then I think we're, we would be in a better state. Um, Mike or Adrian? I, uh, um, I, I hope I'm not... Uh stepping out of my swim lane here. Uh, I, I'm new and, and you, you all have been at this for a while. I just wanted to share how, how Microsoft has internally organized ourselves when we think about supply chain. Um, I lead the supply chain team and it's our job to be scenario owners and think about the end to end. And then we partner with all the different pieces that make up the supply chain. And so, um, uh, because we think about the end-to-end, -end, we can see how different things need to connect and interact. And I don't know if you've thought about like how you scope out your, your different working groups and how it all fits together, but I just wanted to share that for comparison purposes. Yeah, that's actually been um, uh, an open question in a lot of the <laughs> open SSF stuff. Like, you know, for example, where does end user start and end versus like, but end user stuff is also interested in supply chain. So um, it's, it's almost like we need, uh, a, I don't know, a, a, inter, a, a self interoperability, uh, an open SSF interoperability working group or something. Um, uh, but yeah, no, I, I think that, that what you brought up there is, is, um, is of kind of like a huge concern for us as 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 well. Yeah, <laughs> uh, Jacques pointed out matrix management. Yeah, there's a lot of stuff there that I think we're 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 trying to kind of figure out because, like, as you can probably imagine, right there there's different groups that are making tools that also integrate with Salsa, but they're not part of Salsa working group itself or the supply chain working group. And then there are tools that are um, part of some of these other working groups that are not really um, you know, uh, 
rather yeah but there's there's a lot of overlap here and i, and I think um it's uh, i don't know if we have an answer on how to uh uh make that a little bit more organized because i do agree that it is a bit of a um it's a bit of a mess <laughs> Um, yeah, I think next steps are just let's have some like some of the convers at least in terms of this working group, like have a couple of these conversations with more of the salsa folks and maybe a more um, pointed discussion just how we can talk about these things together if that's of interest to you, Jay and Adrian. I, you mentioned some of the meetings that I think would be good places for it, the um, positioning one and the specification one, um, if you're open to that. And yeah, I would love to see this <laughs> kind of come together and and, uh, and and even under this working group if you'll if, if, if we're a contender in the in the bidding race so. <laughs> yeah. well well you know I I, I, well, I will say I mean I, I can't stop um, I can't I won't say I can't stop I, I, I'll say it this way um, I'm I'm with David on this and selfish reasons or not um, I'm with David on this. The sooner we get it in, the faster we can begin and or, or the more impactful the discussions we have will be towards furthering the conversations as it relates to the bridge with salsa, et cetera. Um, that being said, um, if any working group wants to take a vote and say, yeah, let's bring it in here and it gets ingested and now and it gets brought in and now it's actively being worked on in this working group and then a sink could be spilled off with it. That's just all for the better as, as we begin to have these more impactful conversations. Um, otherwise, it's still, it's still flapping in the winds and we're still gonna have community meetings. We're still gonna have technical meetings. We're still gonna do this open, but having it in the open SSF and being worked on um, in the open SSF towards the, the, the objective is the desired state. So, um, no, whatever gets us there, excellent. But, you know, just just wanted to, wanted to level set with that. Cool. Yeah, I mean, there's the tax stuff too. So I think there's a bunch of different avenues we can look at, or you can you can look at um, like the incubating. I, I don't even know where the tax is. I'm not even gonna try to. <laughs> try to make yeah. stuff up here but there is a process for even just new projects i don't know if it needs a home a working group home right off the bat if there's mm -hmm. other ways other things we can do here so uh, abhishek will have a will have a good uh and, and david too will have a good idea of that but you know, i know abhishek sits on the time i don't know if they want to chime in with three minutes left i mean it's good to discuss it in the working group first and if needed we can escalate to the tag but i think it's best to decide the alignment with the working group first, I would say. That's what I'm... All right, yeah, let's figure that out and then go from there. Cool. Thank you. Thank, thank you all very much. Thank you. thank you all very much for your time and, 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 and your ear and your suggestions and your comments. Thank you all very much. Thank you. Thanks for the working group.